Let's talk about world building, specifically world building religion, which is a huge topic and I am super excited to tackle it. Religion is more than gods, and so I am not going to focus a whole lot on gods in this video. I'm going to talk about it a little bit, but I'm going to talk more about other things. And if that sounds weird to you, then stick with me, because while I think my perspective is a little bit different, I also believe that it's worth talking about. Obviously, it's my perspective. Of course, it's worth talking about. <laughs> Of course, I think it's worth talking about anyway. Like I said, we are going to talk about gods a little bit, but we are going to start by talking about the core of the religion, the, the core tenets of the religion. And what I mean by this is beyond the gods, what does the religion focus on? Does it focus on family and caring for each other? Or does it focus on nature and like being one with animals and plants? Or maybe the whole thing is grounded in an idea of peace, or the opposite, in war, and that's the important part, that you should conquer and convert people and things like that. It could also be focused on science and like reasoning and understanding the universe. Or it could be focused on justice and truth, or uh, renouncing material possessions. The list goes on, and if you want even more ideas, go to Wikipedia and type in list of religions and spiritual traditions. Open a few random pages of religions that you've never heard of before, and you will find something like this under uh, beliefs or core tenets or philosophy or things like that. Uh, not all articles will have this, but some of them will. Now, why do I focus on this? Why is this where I want to start? It is because I feel like a lot of fantasy religion are lacking in this department. They have pantheons and they know their gods, the gods have personalities and you know exactly what their gods over and uh, you know a lot about the church and the hierarchy in the church and the church's relation to the ruling body. They might have a few detailed ceremonies and very often a creation myth of some sort. And this is all well and good, these are all important things, I'm gonna talk about them later as well. But even with all this, without some sort of core, the religion often falls flat for me, and it feels kind of bland. I think this happens very easily when the writer starts building the religion from the gods. And that's not a bad thing in itself, a lot of people do this, I do this sometimes too, uh, but I think it makes it easy to, to focus on that this is the god's personality, and the god wants their worshippers to behave in this way, and that's the entire explanation. Or you might start with the church, not from the god, but from the, the church, and you want the church to behave a certain way. Often being corrupted and ruthless, and then you build the entire religion around this. Again, not a terrible place to start in itself, but it makes it easy to forget that people need a deeper reason to believe in something. There has to be, or in my opinion, there has to be something that the religion offers to people a purpose of some sort, a common idea and philosophy to rally around. You don't truly worship a god because the church tells you to. You do it because you believe in something, and you can't just be told that this is something that you have to believe in. There has to be something deeper than that. The core of a religion can also help inform parts of the society that you're creating, the little things that you can add into the background to make uh, the world a little deeper. As an example, say you have a religion that is all about uh, respecting and even worshipping your ancestors. What does that mean for the society? It could mean that the funeral is the most important ceremony and the most frivolous ceremony because this person has now become one of the ancestors, one of the gods we have. Likewise, it could mean that maybe graveyards are being very, very well taken care of because respecting the dead, or that you bury your dead close to your own home, maybe on your own yard or under the floor or something like that because you want to be closer to your ancestors, closer to your gods. That in turn, if you've buried all of your ancestors under your house or near your house, could also mean that there is a sort of taboo against moving away from your house because then you're moving away from your gods, basically. That could be considered very bad or disrespectful, and that could, in turn, be a way for society to make sure that no one tries to get a better life than they have. No one tries to move somewhere else, to start anew, or to, to make it better, because this is where you live, this is where your ancestor are, ancestors are, and this is 
this is where you belong. <laughs> Basically, abandoning your ancestors will bring your wrath upon you, so don't you dare try to move into the city to get a better life. There might also be a great focus on uh, genealogy to make sure that you know who your ancestors are and who you are supposed to pray to. All of these things are little details that could be added into your story and, again, give it a little depth. As another example, maybe the religion that you have is animistic, meaning that it believes that everything in nature has a spirit. What does that mean for when you're making a fire, or eating plants or animals, or when you're building a house, or in any way using resources from nature? Do you ask for forgiveness, perhaps? Or do you give thanks, or something like that? And if you eat something, is that con thing considered dead, or have you sort of incorporated it into yourself? If so, there could be rituals around food and eating, and there could be the idea that you literally are what you eat. So if this particular plant or this particular animal is believed to have a certain property, if you eat that, you gain that property, for example. The point is that people from these two religions and these two societies that I have just sort of described will view the world very differently, and that in turn will inform how you write your characters. A detail about how they pray to their ancestors or how they thank their food before eating a meal is a great way to make a character more complex. Let's do a little exercise. Imagine a religion that doesn't worship ancestors but worships descendants instead. Instead of worshipping the dead, it worships the unborn. What do you think that would look like? What would that mean for the society? I'm gonna give my view of this in the comments down below, so I would love to see yours there as well. Now, with these tenants in place, with this core, I usually find that it's a lot easier to figure out everything else that needs figuring out, and also to figure out what else does need figuring out, because as usual, figuring out every single detail is not world building, that's procrastination. It's fun, but not actually useful. So what do you need to know about this religion? And of course, that depends on how large is the religion in the story? How big of a part of the story is about the religion? Is the story about killing a god? Is there a holy war going on somewhere? Are you supposed to overthrow a church? Or is your character or one of your characters a priest? For all of these things or anything else that has religion as a an important part of the story, of course you're gonna need more details about the religion. And exactly what details, of course, will depend on which story you're writing, what kind of story you're writing. And as with everything else, you're the only one who can decide what is important or not. A uh, general rule of thumb is that you should know more than you are putting into your story, but you should not smoosh more things into the story just so you can world build more. Not that, you know, anyone would ever make excuses to world build more. That, that doesn't happen. I've certainly never done that. Ever. Don't look at me like that. Let's talk about some basic things that you probably do need to know. And among them are what kind of gods do they have? What kind of gods do they worship if they worship gods at all? They don't have to. They could just as well be worshiping spirits or the universe itself or something like that. But the idea is figure out what is at the top of the food chain, so to speak. And also, are the gods real? In fantasy, it's usually the case that they are real, although it's not always obvious. I don't think I have ever written a fantasy story where I personally didn't believe that the gods of this fantasy world were actually real, were actually there, even if they didn't always interfere with people. So are they real? Do they interact with people? Or do people know them more as myths? Myths that they believe in, but they don't They've never met the gods, or god. Speaking of which, another thing to consider is mythology. This, I think, is a place where a lot of writers go all out. Uh, I, I know that I do, and uh, that means having a creation myth, or maybe the opposite of a creation myth, uh, like Ragnarok in uh, Old Norse religion, where this is how the world is going to end. And also religious figures such as prophets, saints, bodhisattvas, and so on. Of course, if it's important to your story, you should have these things, and I do understand the allure of creating more stories, and stories within stories, and all of that, but if you're anything like me, pace yourself. You probably don't need all of this. So let's move on to the next thing, which I would say is clergy. 
does this religion have priests or shamans or elders or basically who is it that brings the word of God to the people? Who are the spiritual leaders? In this category, I also usually think about how the church is structured, if it is structured at all. Is there one big temple in the entire country or are there churches or temples or shrines in every city, every town? Probably not every village, but I don't know, a shrine in every house, maybe? That then doesn't include its own priest, I would say. Probably. Are there traveling priests or monks? Or maybe there are no, there's no clergy at all and the religion is more performed um, on your own. It's locally organized and maybe you do it on your own or within your family or within your village, but there is no spiritual leader as such. Or, of course, it could be a combination of one or more of these things or something else entirely. Next, I would go for the relationship between the church and the ruling body. Is it the church that actually rules, or does the church approve of or appoint the rulers? Is it entirely secular, or is it something in between, or a combination, or again, something else? Once you know this, I would ask, in what context in everyday life do people encounter the church? What other organizations, apart from the rule or the church itself, might they be in charge of? Or at least be involved in? And these could be things like schools or hospitals or guilds, or they could be in charge of transportation. They could be the ones keeping the roads safe, for example. Maybe the church is the only organization that is allowed to or able to sail the seas, and so they are traders. Or anything else, really. This is, this is a place where you can do a lot of fun things. Including, of course, that they don't have to be in charge of anything at all, uh, apart from the church and its ceremonies and traditions. Speaking of which, what are those ceremonies and traditions? As a person goes through life, on what occasions does the church or the religion come in? Some common ones are birth and baptism and coming of age, getting married, death, funerals, probably other things. There can of course also be religious holidays, for example on the solstices or the equinoxes or beginning or end of harvest, um, anniversaries of important births or deaths or wars, things like that. Or maybe every year when the planet experiences meteor showers because their orbit takes them close to uh, an asteroid belt. And this is apart from other occasions, if you have the thing where once a week there is a sermon and once a week or once a month or something you're expected to go to church or temple, or the shrine, or do whatever else um, is, is the thing of your religion. Now, how much detail you need about these things, of course, depends on if they're featured in the story or not. If they're not featured in the story, then it might be enough to just know the, the bare minimum about it. And what I mean by that is knowing that weddings and funerals happen at the temple, or knowing that on the winter solstice the village shrine is ceremoniously burned down and rebuilt again for the spring equinox. If, on the other hand, you intend to feature one or more ceremonies in your story, then of course you will know, you will need to know a little bit more. How it's performed, most importantly, but I would also suggest knowing at least a little bit about why it's performed. What is the significance of a wedding or a funeral according to the religion? Why do they burn that shrine down? What does it symbolize? I also like to know like a brief history of how this became a thing. Why did you start burning down that shrine, for example? I would be very curious to find out. Uh, let me know if you have any theories. A history might not be necessary though, again, depending on your story and if you're going to feature it or not, but Again, I like to think, think about it and have it at the back of my mind as I'm writing, just because I feel like it adds something to my writing. This is the kind of thing that I would have liked to bring up in a uh, workshop video, but I am not planning a workshop video for this topic, or really any future ones either. They didn't turn out the way I wanted, they didn't do what I wanted them to do, and I'm assuming you guys agree because they also didn't get a lot of views. So I'm trying to figure out something new to do, something else um, to show you practically how I do things. I'm thinking maybe live streams, if people would be interested in that. Let me know, let me know if you have any other ideas of how you would like to see the practical implications of what I'm talking about, if you would. Maybe you don't even want to see it. 
Who knows? Anyway, now let's talk about avoiding Planet of Hats. Planet of Hats, for those of you who might not know, is a trope that basically uh, refers to when an entire group of people or of creatures or something like that are basically a stereotype of themselves. Every single individual ticks all of the stereotype boxes. Like, every elf loves poetry and trees, and every individual of this alien species is a ruthless warrior, and everyone in this country loves cooking and food. Every single one, and there is no exception. In this context, I am using Planet of Hats to refer to fantasy worlds where there, are, there is only one religion or only one way to perform that religion. Because to me, that makes absolutely no sense. Once again, look at Wikipedia and look at that list of religions and spiritual practices, spiritual traditions, uh, because there are so many, so many different ones and so many different versions of the same one. Now, in your fantasy world, even if the gods are present at all times and extremely particular about how they want to be worshipped, it will not be a monolith. Unless there are like 20 people in the world in total, then maybe. The point is, the world needs variation, and this could be either other religions or other versions of the same religion. Maybe a version where not all objects, animate and inanimate, have a spirit, but just the animate ones, or maybe just animals with fur, uh, or something like that. Maybe a version that has read a holy text as meaning you should worship fish whereas other parts of the religion has read that as don't eat fish, and a third maybe has interpreted as fish are evil. Now it's okay and even understandable if there is a dominant religion or a dominant version of a religion that maybe doesn't tolerate other versions, but even if that exists, there are going to be other versions even if they're practiced in secret. Also, atheism. There are probably going to be people who don't believe in the gods, or potentially believe in the gods, but don't worship them for one reason or another. Personally, I like it when two or more religions coexist in a world, because even if they coexist peacefully, that can still add, well, first of all, it adds depth, and it can also add tension and conflict. There could be an interesting subplot there, or maybe just something in the background where a character overhears a discussion about religion that your character doesn't care overly about, but again, adds a little bit of depth to the world, because it shows that not everything revolves around your character and your story. There are other things in the world that are still happening, no matter what's going on with your character. That said, though, again, the most important part of the religion, as with ev any world building, really, are the parts that impact your character or characters in some way, and thus impacts the plot. Religion is a great source of tension, even if it's not part of the main plot. You need a complication? Have a character be in a town when there's a festival that upsets their plans in some way. Or they run into a doomsday cult, or they see a falling star, which is a bad omen. Even if your character maybe doesn't believe that it's a bad omen, they know that, oh, now the religious folk are all going to be up in arms about this, and that's not good for whatever it is I'm doing. Like I said before, religion is a huge topic, and I will have more videos about it, so drop a comment if you have any questions, or if there's anything that you would have wanted me to cover about religions that I didn't in this video. Thank you for watching, subscribe if you want more videos like this, hit the bell if you want to make sure that you see them, hit the like button if this video was useful for you in any way, and uh, stay safe, I will see you next time.